it's a valuable question. It doesn't matter that it, it does matter that the probability is low, but you all you have to take both into account. Yes, agreed. I even had a bet with him, by the way. So, you have a bet with Neil deGrasse Tyson on aliens. Yes. So with Terence, it's similar to the situation. It's not Terence versus the Academy. This is a similar situation with UFOs, by the way. It's it's precision versus recall. So these are machine mm. learning topics. Precision is when you make a prediction. So let's just say there are a variety of people here. Some have cancer, some don't. If you want to be precise, you want to say, if I point to you and I say you have cancer, that I'm correct. Okay, so then the recall person says, I want to get every single person who has cancer. I don't want to miss people. So mm. technically speaking, precision is number of true predictions, number of correct predictions over all that you have predicted, whereas recall is number of correct predictions over all that exist. Well, I'll break this down. So a precise person doesn't want to tell someone you have cancer when they don't. So I'm going to be extremely conservative. Mm. And that's something else that you can ask Neil deGrasse Tyson. Are you so willing to preserve the current scientific paradigm that you're unwilling to even entertain ideas that are unlikely but may have merit? That's the battle. It's precision versus recall. I don't want to give credence to something that could be wrong, so I'll give its probability zero rather than minus one. I'll take its minus one. Sorry. I'll take its 5% probability. It's most likely incorrect. Squash it down to zero because mm. I want to be precise. I don't want to make errors. There's, an, there's another closely related term, type one versus type two errors. So false positives versus false negatives. That's probably much easier to understand. So false positive. I don't want to tell, I don't want to tell Alessi he has, did I? pronounced that correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to tell you you have cancer as a doctor and you don't. I want to be extremely precise. But the cost is you. there's a trade-off be between precision and recall. You can't maximize on one and you can't maximize on, on both simultaneously. If you want to be extremely precise, you're going to have to sacrifice some recall. And if you want to be extremely, if you want to recall plenty, you have to be, lose your precision. So another example, Tylenol. They hear one report. Oh, Someone got sick from Tylenol. What do they do? They technically recall them all. They're not thinking, how do I be precise and only take back the three Tylenols that are contaminated? No, they're like, I can't afford for this poison to spread. So let me recall everything. Mm. So now they're safe, but they've lost their precision. Okay, so this is a battle between precision and recall, even in the UFO scene. We don't want to give... We don't want to tell a pilot, yes, you've seen something legitimate because we don't, oh, I've lost it. Oh. Don't you hate when that happens? Yes. Okay. So let's, let's stick to false positives versus false negatives. Okay. For the cancer people, the people who are watching, they're like, look, I would rather you give me a false, I'd rather you give me a false positive. I don't want a false negative. What is a false negative? If I have cancer and you tell me I don't, that's a false negative. Yeah. I would rather a false positive because then it's such an important issue that I want to go I get tested. I would rather be told I have cancer than, and then find out I don't have it. Then I be told, no, you don't have cancer. And I go about living my life and I actually do. And then I die. I'm going to oversimplify this, but you could say over preparation versus under preparation in a way, right? Sure. Okay. So... If you have an issue that's extremely important, this is something I was talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson about. If you have some, look, you can't just take probabilities bare. You can't just say, this has a 10% probability of being correct. It's low, therefore we don't pursue it. Something like that. Because you also have to take into account values. So for instance, if you were to walk with this cup to the kitchen, you would walk at an almost ordinary rate, say mm -hmm. three meters per second. If this was boiling water, the same level, you would walk much slower. Why? Even though the probability of spilling it is the same, because if you were to spill it, you would burn your hand, you would drop this. Oh, okay. 
I was thinking like my hand would be burning, so I'd be running over there trying to get rid of it. <laughs> okay, but another I, issue, I another you. way of saying this is if you're driving up a hill on your car, are you gonna drive are you gonna drive on the left hand side, on the opposite side? No. No. It sounds ridiculous. Why? Even though you've been driving on this road for two hours and there's been no one, you think, well, let me go. No, because even if it's a small probability, you can kill yourself and someone else. So there's a value. There's a small probability, but you also need to take into account the value. Mm. So when I was speaking to Neil deGrasse Tyson, I'm, I was telling him, you can't just speak about probabilities. You also have to take into account that this is an extremely important issue. One of the most important issues. Firstly, there could be new physics here. Secondly, one of the questions that consumes us is, are we alone? And so... It's a valuable question. It doesn't matter that it, it does matter that the probability is low, but you all, you have to take both into account. Yes, agreed. I even had a bet with him, by the way. You so, have a bet with Neil deGrasse Tyson on aliens. Yes. What's the bet? What he said was just like a rationalist would say, but there's a trap here. He said, "I'm like, what is the probability, Neil, that you would assign to these sightings being correct? Like, be having some okay." veracity to them and it implies something non-terrene so that is non-ordinary could be a breakaway civilization it could be extraterrestrial it could be future humans what have you mm -hmm. and he said oh gosh and then he does some calculation which is false like he he arrives at this calculation <laughs> by by a means which if you watch that's not the the mathematical way of going about calculating this but doesn't matter he then lands on one in every one in 10 million something akin to that that, like, we're, that we're not alone. Yes, yes. No, no, no. That, that what we've seen so far. Just that we've, what, yeah. what we claim to have seen. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That what we've seen so far implies extraterrestrials or something like that, or that the pilots have engaged with extraterrestrials or a breakaway civilization or future humans or what have you. Okay, so he says one in 10 million. And I said, okay, technically speaking then, Neil, that would mean that I can put up $10 and you can put up $10 million, and it would still be 10 times in your favor, that bet. Because if someone is saying, I believe, look, in blackjack, or sorry, in, in what's the one where you throw a ball and, it's one in, and that's one in 30, what is the probability there? Well, the roulette, the roulette one, know. the one. Okay, let's say it's one in 64. You throw a ball and it's one in 64. You, for a fair probability, that would be, I pay... $63 and you pay me $1. That's the correct odds for that to yes. make it even for each person. Okay. So for 10 million to one odds, technically I should put up $1 and he should put up $10 million and that should be a fair bet. Now I'm saying I'll put up, nay, I will put up Neil. I will put up $1,000. You put up $1 million. So that should be wild, like 10,000 times in your favor, Neil. Mm -hmm. And then he said, no, no. And the reason is that... <laughs> nope, not doing it. The reason is that he realizes it's ridiculous to make that claim that you also can't state probabilities bare. Firstly, you, you have to have a value associated. The money is that value. But also you have to have uncertainties with your probability. Mm. You don't just say it's ten mil, 1 in 10 million. That's that. No, you say it's 1 in 10 million and I have wiggle room. I don't know. And so that's what he's implying. But then my answer to him, which I didn't say, is you have to temper your, your disprising of all the people who think that there is something to this to match your professed uncertainty. You can't just say, hey, it's, I'm uncertain, but you're, you're a ridiculous person. No, yeah. if you're uncertain, then they may have something correct. Yeah, I think, that, I, I think a real difference here that's a bad look for him is that what's being talked about while it relates to science, of course, because it would scientifically be very interesting if there were other species, particularly those who had been here. It also relates to things that are based upon implied experiences that people have claimed to have seen or whatever. And I think shutting that down is something you, you can't do. Where I would have a bigger issue or, or less of an issue. I, how do I want to say this? Let's pull it back from UFOs for a second. I, I want to talk about that. We're going to get there in a minute, but just pull it back from there for a second. 
Pullback is a great word, by the way. If that's going to come up if you ask me to explain some string theory or geometric unity. Okay. The pullback operation. Okay. That's another star. All right, we'll, we'll we'll put the pin in it. But if someone walks it like a Terrence Howard walks into Neil deGrasse Tyson's office, didn't spend any time in school studying all these things that not only did Neil spend in school, but then afterwards remained around mm -hmm. academia and stuff and studies this and has been a part of this working his ass off on his whole life, but comes in with all these ideas to break the entire foundational part of the science that Neil knows. Ironically, this was one where Neil was very measured, I would say, in his reply, but I understand in the context of a way lesser example, but like I learned every single thing in this studio to be able to do this and what equipment to use and exactly how to use it perfectly. I sit here to this day on podcasts and I master audio while we're doing it. If somebody who had never touched a machine like this, had never even listened to a podcast, walked in here and suddenly told me, no, 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 I know the better way to do all this that breaks every rule of how audio production goes on, my reaction, my natural reaction will want to be like, shut the fuck up, you moron, right? And so I think Neil has that reaction on things which can then unfortunately cause even stronger opinions from the other side which is not good now let's come back to aliens though on something like this this is now even beyond science this is where we are injecting all different people from around the world who have had interesting experiences doesn't mean they're true i'm not saying that but for neil to be so dismissive of it where it's beyond just like a mathematical question, which he turned it into, but it's beyond that. It's also like human experience and what this could or could not mean is very disappointing. And it does feel like, and I like Neil deGrasse Tyson, but it does feel like there's an attitude deeply rooted. There's a condescending beyond, quality to it. For sure. I mean, if you heard, I, I think right, every, exactly. yes, everyone's heard that clip on Joe Rogan. Where he's like, oh, you know, we're, we're so uninteresting to them or whatever. And Joe's like, you're out of your mind. We're that, so interesting. That's also such a foolish it's a foolish statement it says it's less of a statement about reality and more a statement about how he views either humanity or himself that's right so firstly it's factually quote unquote factually incorrect because virtually every single species on earth there's someone who has their phd on that species studying it also we spend decades trying to teach animals language like gorillas and monkeys and then parrots and so on. So we're actively trying to communicate. It's, it's false to say, well, we're uninteresting or that life is so plentiful that, that why, what, what, firstly, you don't know if life is plentiful. You don't know the relationship. You can't make a statement like that. The evidence that we have is that the more scientific or rational we become, the more interested we become in other living creatures to the point where we think maybe grass is conscious. Can we communicate with that? Mm. Maybe trees are. Maybe atoms are. There's panpsychism. <laughs> and if we could communicate with an atom, which some people think they're doing, then we would. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.